By the end of this video, your character will face the direction they're walking in. Let's get started. One way we can make the character change direction is by checking or unchecking this flip X in the sprite renderer. Another way we could do it is by changing the scale of the X to minus one or positive one, or we could change our Y rotation to 180 and zero. In this case, I'm going to leave the rotation and the scale alone, and we're just going to deal with flipping the X of the sprite renderer. Let's see how we can do this in the code. It's time to do some cleanup. We declared this as a public variable. The reason we did this is so you can modify the speed directly here in the Unity Inspector, and if you increase this, this would make your player go faster or, sl or slower. Later, we don't necessarily want other scripts to be able to change the speed in the player movement script, and if if we set a variable to public, it means other scripts can reach in here and adjust our speed value. So we're going to make this private, but that would disable our ability to adjust the speed in the inspector. So there's a way we can handle this, and this is by writing serialize field in square brackets before the variable. Now other scripts cannot reach in and adjust the speed, but if we were to go back to Unity, we can see that we can still manually adjust the speed here in the inspector thanks to the serialize field attribute. Next, we're going to be reusing the sprite renderer component. So rather than getting this here through code, we're also going to declare our sprite renderer as a variable. And we're again going to use the serialize field attribute. And we're going to make a private sprite renderer. And then we can just call this sprite renderer. And then what we'll have to do is say, go back into Unity and drag this sprite renderer in here to hook it up and make sure that it knows what it's talking about. Now, back inside our script, we no longer need to use get component because we already have a reference to it up here. So we can just delete this get component and say sprite renderer. Next, I'm going to scroll down here to our update method and I'm going to refactor some of this code into its own method. I'm just going to highlight this chunk of code, including the comments. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to refactor, which is right over here. And I'm going to say extract method, which is going to add it into a new method. And I'm going to name this handle movement. Then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to hit control shift R, I'm going to extract the method. And I'll just rename this by hitting F2 and saying clamp movement. And there we go. Because I don't actually need to look at this code right now, I can also just collapse these methods. Next, just to follow the same structure, I'm going to declare a new private void and call this flip character x, add squiggly brackets, and then I'm going to call this method from update. So it's being called every frame. Then we're going to go in here and we're going to write some logic that determines if and when our character's x should be flipped. Here, we're going to need a new variable. So I'm going to go back up to the top of the script and write private float x pause last frame. Now, within our flip character x method, we're going to say if transform.position.x, which refers to this value right over here. And then I'm going to use the greater than symbol and say, if this is greater than x pause last frame, then we're going to open squiggly brackets and we are going to say sprite renderer dot flip x equals. And is this going to be true or false? Well, we're saying if our current position is greater than our position last frame, meaning we're to the right of that position, this means we are moving right. In this case, flip X is going to be false because our character by default is already facing right. If your character is by default facing left, then this would be true. Next, we are going to say not else because that may force our character to go in a direction we don't want them to if they're standing still. So we're going to say else if transform.position.x is less than X pause last frame sprite renderer dot flip X equals True. And I'll just write a comment in here. We are moving left. Finally, we have to set our X pause last frame. We can do that here by saying X pause last frame equals form dot position dot X. Let's save and go back to Unity to test this out. Now here we are. If I move right, he faces right. And if I move left, he faces left. If I stand still, nothing happens, which is perfect. We just want him to continue facing in the direction he was previously facing. Now let's improve the logic by fixing a bug that will occur if we move our character into a wall. 
Back under handle movement, we had this line here, which measured our current input into Unity. We can go ahead, copy this line, and then we can reuse it here under flip character X. And then we'll make another condition for our if statement. We'll say if input is greater than zero, meaning we are telling our player to move right. And then just to be safe, I'll wrap this one in some brackets. And then I'll do the same here saying if input is less than zero, and then we'll use the double and sign in order to say that both of these conditions must be met. Only then will we flip our player right and left. Let's go ahead and test that out and see if this little bit of extra logic fixes that issue. And here we are, and now we can see that it actually does it perfectly. No longer does our player flip when moving into a wall, and we can still move left and right, and he flips perfectly. In the next video, we'll be animating our character to both idle and run using Unity's powerful built-in animation system. We'll see you there.